guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Send me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Where the Demon Lurks. As you can see, we've got a new uh, main menu screen. I really like this because it, uh, I guess it kind of reflects the uh, progress you've made in the main story. I really like the reflection right there on the, on the side. Oh man, who he used to be. Oh man, I can't wait to, to get more into this. But anyway, y'all. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, as I've said before in a couple of videos, I'm now an affiliate of Green Man Gaming. Just, uh, just click that link in the description and just buy anything on their site using that link and I'll get commissioned. But anyway, y'all, let's jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Okay. Alright, shaking your head, you walk to the drink aisle. Yep, he called you out again. He knows you haven't been sleeping much lately after you bought that new MMO expansion pack. And yes, you did pump half of your last paycheck into a level skip for your main class. It's a blessing he's offering you lunch. The members of Team B arrive for their shift in a few minutes, a few minutes later. A brother-sister pair that greets you with a warm hello. You meekly nod in response and quickly regret why you didn't just say hello back to them. King talks to the brother about the, about the day's bag money handover while you head, head to the back to pack your things. You wait outside for King to finish conversing with the siblings. Good weather for drying clothes today. The warm afternoon breeze blows against your mane, wafting the scent of different cooked foods from the plethora of restaurants in front of the convenience store. Your stomach growls audibly. Kept you waiting, huh? The alpaca paces over to you. So, uh, where are we having lunch? Not the usual spot? The usual spot it is, then. Lead the way. Both of you walk side by side to the main to the same busy street. Oh. Wow, it is, uh, decently busy. Well, I, I wouldn't say busy, but it's packed. Wow. Somewhere in Japan, I think. The daily workforce are out for their lunch. They walk by without so much as a glance at, a glance at both of you. You pull out your phone. The screen is cracked on the bottom right corner, a memento of its previous owner. You're still using that thing? You're still using that phone? Yeah, it works. I thought you'd have uh, ha had saved enough money for a new one already. I could have, but it just feels right to keep this one. Makes me think I should have given you a better phone. With your college fees? It's fine. This is the best you could afford. Ha! True. So, how are things back in the shop? The brother looked like he had uh, he, the brother looked like he had much to say. One second, y'all. What is this? Uh, five-digit verification code. Oh, one second, y'all. Parents are trying to buy Netflix and Disney Plus, and they would like to. Well, they're trying to get Disney Plus, and they're going to be paying me for it because it's on my account. So, uh, here we go. All right. I'll be right back. Hey, y'all. Sorry about that. I'm back. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Where were we? All right. So, how were things back in the shop? The brother looked like he had much to say. Brother? He has a name, you know. Now don't tell me you forgot it. Maybe I should do a lighter voice for him. Brother? He has a name, you know. Don't tell me you forgot it. The only names I need to know are yours and the other NPCs in my game. That kind of attitude? How do you expect to be a manager someday? I never said I wanted to be a manager. Now come on, his name. I want to say Michael. It's Mike, and he's doing well. And he has a sister, Anna. The alpaca leans in close to your face and raises his voice to emphasize her name. They really appreciate us taking their shifts so they can take care of their sick grandma. Is she getting better? Mm-hmm. They say her health is improving, and as a show of thanks, if we ever need to, if we ever need them to cover our shifts, they'll do it, no questions asked. Great. Then we can have then we can have them take one of the one day of our shifts so we can have an all-night game session like last time. Divine Destiny? Oh, God. Divine Destiny 14? Hell yeah! It's been a month since I've even touched it. I've been swamped with classes. You see the video I sent on you how to take the, took down the Underworld, o Underworld Overlord boss? I, I skimmed through it. How can you skim through that? It's a half an hour battle that requires a full team of proper strategizing. King crosses his arms in a huff and raises an eyebrow at you. Don't forget your fleece in a don't get your fleece in a bunch. There's tons of other stuff we can do, like dungeon daily, like dungeons dailies. Plus you, plus you know maybe Overlord is not such a bad guy. Who are we to judge? The Apaka stares at you, dumbfounded. You must be the dullest adventurer ever, and you're a walking rainbow lollipop. Honey, I wish you could have a lick of this. He flicks his brightly colored pompadour and bats his long lush, long lush lashes at you. I like your fleece back to its natural color. He slaps you slightly on the lightly on the shoulder, and you bro both burst out in laughter. You both continue walking to the park through the winding roads that have come to define this town. Even though you've been here for over a year, you can get lost when you need to go somewhere you've rarely been. 
Your experience is a testament to the legends about how the town was built, ba built based on a maze-like structure to confuse demons and evil spirits from finding their victims. Makes it hard for, for even a demon like yourself to find a public restroom. After 20 minutes of turning from one street to the next, you both reach the intersection across the park. One second, y'all. Let me have a drink. Mm -mm. Ah, delicious Ho Garden beer. A, a beer made from a garden of hoes, I suppose. Oh crap, it's those guys! Buzzing around the main entrance are a group comprised of six goons dressed in matching black hoodies. They're peddling pamphlets and asking people passing by to sign some petition. We should go around, take the side entrance. But our spot is closest to the main entrance! I know, but that group always gives me a bad feeling. Maybe it's best if we avoid them. Hmm. Fine. Let's go. Both cross the street and head for the hall, head for the walkway to the right of the main entrance. Making a beeline, you slip through unnoticed by the group guarding the gate. The stealth game has begun. A side entrance to the park is within your view. This is it. We're almost there. Then a pair of hooded figures step out from the entrance to halt your way. Why, hello there, fellow townsfolk of Kibbleton. Fuck! Your right hand instinctively moves over to cover King. We don't want anything that you're selling. But we're not selling anything. But we're not selling anything. In fact, we're giving away a great opportunity to find happiness. A chance to be free. A chance to take control of your own destiny. Sure, sure, thank you, but I'm fine with my destiny. Now, please move aside. Your tone is harsh, but these two aren't taking the hint. They continue staring at you with glazed eyes. Oh, uh, the new potential members! Come, come, you must read our teacher's wise words on how to live a longer, more prosperous life. Membership is open! Learn the secrets of overcoming death! Three more of them emerge from the park entrance and surround you both. Kobu! They invade your personal space and physically stampede towards you. Three new hooded members manage to split you and King apart. He's dragged a few steps away as they corner him against the wall. Listen, you must have family or friends you care about, right? Don't you want to protect them? Don't you know Don't you know people are dying faster than ever before? You don't know when the, when the cold hands of death will be knocking on your doorstep, but we do. The great teacher knows all. All you have to do is join us. Wait. You raise your hands up, trying to get them to stop. F fulfill your purpose in life. Join the Dawn Seekers, and you'll be set for life. But I... Our teacher knows the way. He can save you. He can save us all. With every word, you feel yourself getting pushed back into a corner. You don't want to spend an eternity in hell, do you? you step closer. Save your soul. This is the only chance. And closer. New members get a brand new air fryer. An air fryer that comes in five different color options. Embrace destiny in a healthier lifestyle. Ah. Their voices seem to crescendo as they go on and on about their group. You're trapped. You struggle to think as every thought is cut out, is cut off by their continuous chatter. Cults are nothing new. Dozens of them arrive in the underworld on a daily basis. Though meeting them in real life is more annoying than having mosquitoes buzzing around your ear on a hot summer afternoon. Annoyed, you turn to where King is. His face is pale and even his brightly colored fleece seems deflated. He reaches out to sign some kind of document. STOP! Your sudden outburst stuns everybody and everyone nearby effectively silencing the hooded characters who were harassing you. They back away, letting you walk over to King. You yank him by the arm and he stumbles to get walking. We're leaving, and don't any of you bother us again! You pull King harder than you intended to guide him into the park. The hooded people mutter amongst themselves, but you don't hear them. Your sole focus is, is on getting to your spot. You reach the bench you're looking for, a single feet facing the park's main man-made man river. The branches of the tall trees huddle together to shade the bench from the sun's rays. Sitting on the park bench, you drape your arms on the backrest and pan exhaustedly. Wow, you're really out of shape if you're that tired from walking. King bends over the bench while trying to catch his breath. We... we weren't walking. It was like a... you cough. A sprint. King chuckles hardly and sits next to you. You got the drinks? Yeah, in my bag. Help yourself. You point to the black backpack next to your leg. He grabs the bag and pulls out two bottles of lemon iced tea. Here! You take a bottle from King and down the, revert, the reinvigorating tea in one big gulp. Slumping back against the bench, you let out a loud gasp as you pull the bottle away from your mouth. I can't believe- I can't believe they just ganged up on us like that! Someone should do something about them! Like who? The police? Shouldn't they be handling these kinds of cases? Well, I'm making a report. You know it won't work! King pulls out his phone and calls someone. Hello, yes, hi, this is King- King Demeric. I would like to make a report. Yeah, some group of Black Hoods at the park tried to harass me into joining them. I think they're a cult. What do you mean this isn't a job for the police? They're harassing people on the streets. No, no, they're not hurting anyone. 
So what, you're just gonna leave them be? And what's the point of having you guys? Or am I supposed to go? The gang? Are you kidding me? Stop laughing at me! We need help, are you just going to let these weirdos run the streets? No, I am not being hysterical. King suddenly gasps. What did you just call me, miss? Gets it, I'm obviously getting nowhere with this. Goodbye. King angrily hangs up and sits next to you in a huff. Told you, what did you expect to happen? The cops here are in the gang's pockets. Those black hoods probably work under the radar of the gang. That's why nothing's been done about them. This is so frustrating. He rubs his temples as though trying to rub the memory of the phone call away. Can we maybe just eat and move on? Let's. King grabs his bag and passes a blue Tupperware container to you. He pulls out a matching green container for himself. You open the top and you feel you feel the gentle heat wafting through your fingertips. It's a lunchbox with two compartments. One side has a bed of rice and the other an assortment of fried chicken on a bed of fresh crisp salad. It's the Overlord. On top of the rice are some steamed mustard greens and cut carrots arranged in the shape of the Divine Destiny 14 boss. King leans over to look at the lunchbox. Thank God it all stayed in place while we were running. You notice that his eyes are on you now, so you smile warmly. Thanks, man. That is really this is really impressive. Say that say that after you've tried it. You know you haven't beaten the overworld in game, but at least you can beat him with your stomach. He nudges the side of your belly. You roll your eyes at the alpaca and proceed to dig in. Mmm, this chicken is really juicy and tender. Thanks, I worked hard on seasoning it just right. King's lunchbox is the same as yours, minus the decoration. I'd trade you my carrot for a piece of chicken? What? No, I put those there for you. Plus, mine's actually tofu, it's not chicken. Plus, mine's actually tofu, it's not chicken. Weakling. The branches sway and rustle as you fill your stomach with the Overlord King prepared. It's so damn sweet. After the meal, you both leave the park when the coast is clear. Let me see the bad journal. King. King's my friend, and I'm forever indebted to him for helping me rebuild my life after the event. He's sweet, has a talent for cooking, and cares a whole lot. He's arguably the nicest soul I've ever met. Even after I found my own place, he still checks up on me, and I appreciate that. I wish I could repay him somehow for all his generosity. I can't imagine what would have happened if I didn't run into him that day. After the meal, you both leave the park when the coast is clear. By the time you both, by the time you part ways with King, the sun has begun to set. There's nothing better to do around town. You return to your apartment. Your apartment building is tucked into a far, a far away corner of the town, as though, as though it wished no one would find it. An odd dissonance fills you whenever you return to this part of the town. In contrast to the rest of the town, this place is devoid of businesses, or life for that matter. A dead end is one way to put it. Not that you're complaining. You walk up the flight of stairs to the first floor, where your room is. The screeching of a singing contest on the TV from the room below accompanies your climb. A typical apartment owner, an elderly man of few words. He's, he is content... He is content as long as you pay your rent on time and doesn't stir up any trouble. Your key fits into the doorknob and you enter your room. Honey, I'm home! The silence of your mildly furnished apartment welcomes you back. Your current living arrangements are a far cry from what you had back in the underworld. The current unit you live in has a very basic accommodations. One living room that doubles as your bedroom and dining room. One washroom with a shower head that only sprays cold water, a washing machine, and a toilet next to it. Then there's a tight space kitchen that just barely accommodates you in the relic of a refrigerator. And yet, this is all you could ever ask for. Dropping your bag on the floor, you walk over to the bean bag in front of the TV to start up to your console. I should probably do my laundry while I shower later, but first, let's squeeze in one round of dailies. That's the last thing you- that's the last- that's the last- that's the last you think of your laundry, or chores for that matter, for the rest of the day. Yeah, bananas! Oh god. A portal op a portal tears open within the, within the break room of the Demon Generals. Fortis stumbles out of the portal with shaky steps, drained of energy. <sighs> he props himself up against the nearby doorframe in defiance of the gravity pushing him towards the floor. The weight of three months of non-stop work is visibly chipped away at the demon's strength. Fortis steadies himself. Get! He slaps himself. It! He slaps himself again. Together! Come on, if you're down, the staff won't work. Got to keep the energy up. Just get your coffee and get back to the torture onto the torture floor. After psyching himself up, he briskly enters the pantry. The dust lingering in the air chokes Fortis. The pantry is hardly used these days, to say the least. Fortis walks over to the countertop, picking up his red mug. His other fellow generals' allies' cups have remained untouched ever since Vendrake's coup. He bends down to get the instant coffee from the lower cabinet, but notices a translucent hand sticking out of the side. It's one of Amer's extra appendages. Wait! If he's hiding in there, what th that means he shouldn't be here! He devises a plan to make the general reveal himself willingly. Fortis walks over to the nearby fridge and pulls out a bottle of lemon soda. On the side of the bottle is the note that reads, Property of a mayor. Hmm. This fridge is full. I should probably throw some stuff out like this bottle of soda that nobody ever drinks. No! <laughs> Fahrenheit! 
He knocks his head against the ceiling of the cabinet while trying to come out of it. Pulling himself Fahrenheit? Really? Pulling himself up, he walks over to Fortis, one of his extra limbs rubbing his, smooth, his head to soothe the pain. Amir snatches the bottle from Fortis and hisses at him. Can't you see whose name is on the bottle? Whoa, whoa, calm down here, kitty. I was just joking. The cat demon faces Fortis, a scowl still plastered on his face. What were you doing down there? Looking for inspiration for the new project Vendrake has got you on? The mayor scoffs. As if. I just needed some place where some place where Vendrake's goons couldn't find me. They keep hovering over me while I work. And how'd you get here? Easy. I painted my face on a sack of bolts and played a tape of me knocking metal. You're kidding. The mayor raises an eyebrow at Fortis. Oh, well, you better get back soon. They'll cause trouble again if they find out you're missing. Not until I come up with some new idea to take Vendrake down. Fortis lets out an exhausted sigh. This wasn't. This isn't the first time the scientists have been plotting against their new leader. Somehow, just just knowing that Amer is still adamant about fighting back stings Fortis, Fortis's heart. You seen the coffee? Here. He pulls the bottle of instant coffee from his belt from his belt and passes it passes it to Fortis. Don't use it all. It's one of the key catalysts for the weapon I'm building. Fortis keeps quiet and turns to the coffee maker. He pours the instant mix into the machine and turns it on. The grumbling of the device reverberates through the pantry. Amer. He turns to his companion, unable to match his facade, ma unable to ma maintain his facade that everything is fine. Don't you think it'll be easier if you just, I don't know, just do what Vendrake says? Oh no, don't tell me you're taking a side. That's not what I mean. You didn't forget what happened last time you tried to launch a rebellion against Vendrake, did you? Don't you dare accuse me of forgetting. I watched every demon that went through this through his new re-education program. Their lives got sucked out of their eyeballs because of those non-stop reruns of the HR training video. By the end, they were practically empty husks of themselves. Then why are you still doing this? Because I'm doing what's right. Kobu is out there and he's the Demon Lord, not Vendrake. We need to fight back or we'll turn this whole company to a new hell for demons. You're supposed to be helping me. Fortis clenches his fists. Amer's questioning begins to fade as the sound of his pounding heart is all that reaches his ears. He quivers during his response. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bring that notification bell. If a super thanks, your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.